Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. If you like the Mike Widener Show and you want to make your own podcast, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. Secondly, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can also add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you. You can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many more. You can also make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get start the mike wagner show is powered by sonic web studios hi this is mia mohsen zia also known as mia no time for love check out my latest book missing available in print and ebook format on amazon it's now time for the mike wagner show powered by sonic web studios and sponsored by international award-winning author mia mohsen zia of missing the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on over 40 podcast platforms, as well as HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds FM, and the TheMikeWagnerShow.com. We can be heard in over 100 countries, featuring over 1,000 well-known and amazing guests throughout the globe, and named one of the top 100 global podcasts in the New York Weekly Times, Hollywood Entertainment News, Los Angeles Weekly Times, Apple, and Chartable. So sit back and relax and enjoy another great episode of the award-winning Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. Powered by SoundWeb Studios. Visit online at SoundWebStudios.com for all your needs. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? SoundWeb Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author, Mia molson If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson Available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Z has garnered great reviews and Eve Love and enjoys by Howard's celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Fourth Riley, and Minnales. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Z, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com and over 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and we're now heard on HamiltonRadio.net, Diamonds Radio, Oldies FM, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, baseball gear, and more. Makes great gifts 24-7. Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson ZM. For great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also cool merchandise like T-shirts, pop sockets, phone cases, uh, pop sockets, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, themikewidenershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who is with American Band, toured and open for Def Leppard, Blue Acer Cult, Poison, Eric Clapton, Billy Idol for over 40 years. We'll talk about this legendary group. And there's a new documentary out there which follows the story of an amazing band and singer-songwriter of a terrific gentleman spanning four decades from the 80s sunset trip into the 90s stadium rock tours to to his shows today and also released eight albums, nine movies, including a Disney flick. And um, also his work has been featured in a number of films as well, too, and uh, worked with a number of uh, legends as well. And he's also got a brand new song out called Skies Falling from Falling Higher Soundtrack and also a couple of movies that's coming out as well. And this guy's been really busy. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studio somewhere in the West Coast, the um, the amazing um member and founder of the group Ampage, and also he's also done some uh, amazing solo work. Ladies and gentlemen, American singer, songwriter, and the leader of Ampage, Mark Mason. Mark, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning, Michael. How you doing? 
Hey, I'm doing great. It looks like you're chilling out there somewhere on the West Coast. You've been pretty busy lately, too. You, um, Your group Ampage toured and opened for Def Leppard, Boyster Cult, Poison, Eric Clapton, Billy Idol for over 40 years. And the Unidoc documentary feel, follows the story of your group Ampage from the uh, 80s um, Sunset Strip to 90 Stadium uh, Tour and also to today as well. And um, also that uh, also follows you as well, too, as a singer songwriter. You guys have released eight albums and nine movies, including Disney's Brink. And um, you also uh, had your work featured in I- I'm Dangerous Tonight, Bikini Summer 2. Also, um, Mortal Fear and Maury Clever at Tommy Shaw, some sticks and uh, songwriter Wes Arkin from Guns N' Roses. You had a number of releases and you've got some works, too, including the song Skies Falling from the Falling Higher soundtrack. Also, in an upcoming movie in 2021. You guys have been really at it as well, too. You're very um, just basically just hard work. And before getting to all that, uh, Mark, tell us how you first got started. Um, dad was a, uh, my dad was a guitarist and a guitar teacher in Pasadena. And my mom was a creative writing teacher. Uh, so if you put them together, you get songwriter musician. So. <laughs> Too natural, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I could, I could do one thing and make them both happy. So. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? Um, well, I used to, yeah, funny enough, I used to do sports. I was a runner and, um, uh, I wanted to go to the Olympics and, um, I kept getting injured and I'd have to get surgeries. I'd have to learn how to walk again. And by the third time I had to learn how to walk again, I was like, all right, where's my guitar? <laughs> I'm a star. It's like, forget it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, we did shows back in elementary school. We had a band, um, and I just loved it from day one. I love songwriting, um, and I love performing. So those are my two passions. Hmm. Interesting. And uh, who are some of your favorite uh, singers, songwriters, and uh, musicians growing up? I- I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear that. I-, I said, who are some of your favorite uh, singers, songwriters, and musicians growing up? Um, you know, Dad would always be playing Creedence Clearwater Revival, um, Bachman Turner Overdrive, and actually we just did a show with Randy Bachman. Wow. Um, you know, of course, Beatles and Stones and uh, Mott the Hoople, Sweet. Um, you know, just pretty much everything. So I, I just love all kinds of musics. And if you listen to my albums over the years, it's there's a lot of different, you know, it, it varies from album to album. It's not, you know, some bands, they'll, they'll maybe get a hit album in their 80s and it'll be like this metal, you know, great metal album or something. And then the rest of their albums are all metal sounding. And, uh, you know, we're kind of different that way. Um, where yes, we had an '80s album that was a metal album, and then in the '90s uh, we brought in some alternative uh, guitarists and keyboard players, and did in a couple albums like that. Um, just a lot of different guys. We brought in Earl Slick from Lennon and Mac- or Lennon and uh, <laughs> Lennon and McCartney from uh, Lennon and uh, and David Bowie. Uh, he was with the band for about a year. Um, and you know, it just it just varies. Rick Allen from Def Leppard. He uh, played on a couple of our albums and did some shows with us also. Um, and of course we opened up for them. So that was great. Mm, that's rather interesting as well too. And of all the bands that you opened for, which band you really enjoyed uh, opening up for and why? Uh, I'd say, I'd say Def Leppard for sure. Um, we were on tour and um, we were supposed to open up for them in <clears throat> we were supposed to be in Puerto Rico opening up for them. And we got stuck in a snowstorm in Albuquerque. Oh no. And, yeah. So we're on the tour bus and I mean, just thousands of cars. I never seen anything like it. I didn't know this stuff existed. I'm not from the snow. So um, <laughs> we were just sitting there with thousands of other cars trapped and um, you know, people knocking on the tour bus, you know, asking if they use the bathroom and you know, things like that. Um, and um by the time we got dug out, the uh, highway patrol there got us out and got us to the Dallas airport. And we flew to Puerto Rico. We were there probably two hours before we were supposed to go on stage. Wow. And uh, Def Leppard, they sent their tour manager, picked us up. We couldn't bring any of our equipment because it was back at the bus. Um, and they're like, you know, just use our equipment, you know. Mm. So, you know, they got 18 Marshall stacks and and uh, they've got everything. So and, and you got to understand most bands that you're opening up for don't like you to even be on the same stage as them let alone using their equipment mm-hmm. um and so def leopard those guys are 
probably the nicest, best hosts, um, and just, you know, I mean, great musicians, songwriters for sure, but it, it was just great. It was, it was so much fun and their, their audience was awesome. Um, and, uh, it was, it was great. The Puerto Rican, uh, people are awesome. Um, it was about a 20,000 seater that night. So, um, it was just great. It was a great experience. Mm. Um, and, and it sounded like it as well, too. And of course, you also had your own music. We'll talk about that along with your uh, upcoming um, you know, projects as well, too. But first, to listen to the Mike Wagner Show at the Mike Wagner Show.com, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Soundweb Studios is the answer. Soundweb Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at soundwebstudios.com. Mention Mike Wagner's show, get 20% off your first project. Soundweb Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show. International warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Eve Love and Enjoys by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Ford Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for it goes missing by Mia Molson Zia. Available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 40 podcast platforms heard in over 100 countries. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once and Wrinkles, also cool merchandise and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. I'll support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com for the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the amazing singer, songwriter, and leader of Ampage, Mark Mason, here on the Mike Widener Show. We talked about how his band tour over 40 years, opening for Def Leppard, Blue Oyster Cult, Poison, Eric Clapton, Billy Idol, and more. And of course, um, I also released eight albums and nine movies to date, including Disney and Sprinkle. We'll talk about that. You had some uh, releases as well, too. You had Champagne and Caviar, Iron Horse, Falling Higher, Future Days Gone By, and um, Iron Man Sam, and Don't Shoot the Wounded, Bridge of Souls, Rock 2018, and more. You know, Tell us how you uh, first got started with Ampage and how you guys came all together. Uh, it started in high school. Um, three of us got together and... Uh, uh, back then I was just the bass player and, um, we had a, a lead vocalist join the band. So that was a four piece band at that point. And we were together for only about a year or so, never recording any albums. Um, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple years later, I ended up in Hollywood and, um, kind of re put together the new ampage back then. Um, and that's when we, um, signed with Ironworks records and did the, uh, champagne caviar album. Um, we had um, we had been doing some shows. I think we're at the Stone in uh, San Francisco, and uh, and this guy came up to us after the show. It turns out it's Mitch Mitchell, the drummer from Jimi Hendrix. Huh. And um, and he's yo magic. You guys are magic. I want to work with you. <laughs> I, <didn't know. laughs> I want to work I with you. Work with yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> I want to work with you. I'm like, oh, that's nice. I don't know who you are, but you know. <laughs> Um, but my drummer knew who he was and my drummer was just like, oh my God. So, um, we ended up partying with them that night. We went back to our hotel room. Um, and then we got kicked out of our hotel room, which wasn't unusual at the time. What um, the heck did you do that pissed them oh, off? I guess know. that's a question. <laughs> it was, it was the eighties, baby. <laughs> um, so anyways, um, uh, Mitch put us up at his hotel for the whole band, you know, took care of all of it. And we hung with him for a few days. Then he came down to Hollywood and, and uh, stayed with us and helped us work on the new album. And uh, it was great. It's a really nice guy. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was great. Mm -hmm. and, and you had mentioned about Chef Champagne and Caviar and uh, some of your other works. You also had Rolling Dogs of Thunder, Don't Shoot the Wounded. And uh, tell us about some of the albums uh, you put out and what inspired you to write them. Um, yeah, I mean, for singles like Rolling Dogs of Thunder, um, I had uh, I had some surgery done. I was in bed for about six months recovering, so I started I started watching uh, Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> oh my and, gosh! Uh, 
we had also I was like what a hundred episodes. I watched the Sons Sons of Anarchy, and I just never liked the beginning song. I, you know, and I'm sorry if the guys listening to wrote that. But I just, <laughs> I didn't like it. What are the chances uh, he is though? That's the thing. Oh man. <laughs> so, anyways, I just thought I'd try and write something. You know, and uh, so I wrote a song about a fictitious motorcycle club, um, and I call them uh, Rolling Dogs of Thunder, and you know, and that's that's kind of where that song came from. Um, when we were shooting the music video for that uh, up in Point Arena, we had the drones going and um, a lot of the local um, motorcycle riders, you know, wanted to be in the video. So after after we were done shooting the video, they were like, dude, this should be like a real club. And so we ended up this fictitious club became a real club now. So um, it, it was fun. It was fun. It's a good mm-hmm. time. And, and it sounded like it as well, too, yeah. that uh, you also had Rock 2018. Um Future Days Gone By and, um, you know, just more as well, too. And also had um, featured in the movie uh, Disney's Brink as well, too. And uh, tell us about that. And how'd you get hooked up at Disney? Um, that my publisher kept trying. Well, my publisher was getting us in a lot of different movies like Mortal Fear. I'm Dangerous Tonight, um, some other stuff. And um, and I wanted to do a Disney movie. So I found who the uh, <laughs> not the way you're supposed to do it, but I found out who the, uh, the the music editor or the music supervisor was for Disney. And so I just start calling him every single day. And, you know, the uh, secretary wouldn't put me through. And, um, you know, and uh, so I would call every day after two months of me calling every day. She finally put me through um, to the uh, supervisor and she goes, all right, this is the Mark Mason that's been calling me. Every single day for two months, you got <laughs> you got thirty seconds to explain why I don't need to hang up on you right now. <laughs> and um, and I just said, I can I I work with a lot of musicians, you know, some pretty well known, some not. And uh, we write songs, you know. I like to write the songs for the movie because usually, at least back then, it was the record companies were pitching their songs from their bands or their albums um, for a specific movie. And we were kind of doing the opposite. We were actually writing the song for the movie and bringing in the right, you know, the right musicians to give it that, that vibe. And um, so she goes, all right, let me give you a shot. Um, We're working on a movie called Brink. And um, uh, so I asked what the soundtrack, I said, what's the temp track you used in this particular scene? So she tells me the name of the song and I counted out the beats per minute and started with that and then basically wrote the whole Brink song around that. And I was there at the uh, studio when they put the song into the movie. And it was like the, the editors were like, well, God, it just, it just fits in there so naturally, nice. you know? And I was just laughing because of course it does. Cause when they shot the scene, they had the temp music going and we got the exact beats per minute. So the people, whether the actors know it or not, they're kind of moving to that song. Um, so anyways, that was kind of our, our little trick of the trade. Um, and, uh, it, it went really well. They ended up using it for the movie. They also used it for the trailer. Um, and, uh, they brought me down there. I got to meet everybody at Disney and it was, it was pretty awesome. It was pretty cool. And certainly no Mickey Mouse feet. I have to say that no Mickey Mouse feet. (laughs) No. And actually, actually what was really cool was at the, um, when our song's playing at the end of the movie, I think after they say their last word, then our song comes right in and they've got the original 1940s Mickey Mouse dancing to our song, which I just thought was cool as hell. So, Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's like, who would have thought Mickey Mouse from 1940s dancing to your song? I would love that. You know, that was I was put in uh, Steamboat Willie or uh, Donald Duck from the fifties or something when Goofy was first drawn, you may as well put them in. <laughs> Absolutely. Make it a band. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Yes, yes. And there's a lot that can just go off of it. And you also did your own um, movies as well, too. And you got um, Falling Higher as well, too, to go with the uh, song uh, Sky is Falling. And uh, tell us more about Falling Higher, speaking of films. Uh, So Falling Higher is a documentary. um, You know, we've been doing Ampage for 40 years, basically. Um, and I've got, a, I, I have like all the videos from the eighties and nineties, sunset strip days, all the crazy stuff we did. And, um, so I found a documentary guy that I liked and asked him if he'd be interested. His name, uh, his, his, uh, Colin Felger. And, um, I basically gave him 900 hours worth of footage from wow. 40 years of Ampage. Yeah. And the poor guy had to sit through all of it. And then kind of put together a story from that, you know? 
Um, it was, you know, <clears throat> 40 years of Ampage. We, I mean, it was the 80s Sunset Strip. Uh, it was the 90s uh, when, when uh, uh, there's just a lot of going on. Um, we were signed in 97. We signed with Higher Source Records. Um, and uh, that we were probably about a week from hitting out on tour. And those people killed themselves down in San Diego. Oh, uh, no. The, the Heaven's Gate cult, right? Mm -hmm. Well, their subsidiary company for Heaven's Gate was Higher Source. So next thing you know, we got the news media just surrounding our office and our, our company and our band and um, thinking we're part of this, you know, this cult. And, you know, so it was uh, it was crazy. You know, we're a week away from going on tour. The label spent one point three million on us at that point. And uh, and the record had just hit the stores and now we're being part of this cult that you know we had nothing to do with so i'm on tv with every news organization in the world you know wearing my ampage hat holding up my ampage cd going we got nothing to do with this <laughs> you know it's like um it, it was just crazy it was just crazy um another thing that happened 97 was probably one of the wackiest years um we uh we had just got earl slick joined the band earl slick was the guitarist for john lennon and david bowie Mm -hmm. And since I got Lennon's guitar player, we figured on that album, we'd do a Lennon cover song, which was, uh, we ended up with Give Me Some Truth. And being the lead singer, I tend to change lyrics around a lot, but usually they're my lyrics, so who cares, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, so we, I changed some of the lyrics as I usually do. The song comes out, and then I get a letter from EMI Publishing New York saying I'm getting sued. Oh, um, because no. You, you can't change a John Lennon lyric. It's like a church. You can't do it. Um <laughs> And so everyone's yelling at me. The label's pissed off. And I mean, I was impressed that somebody in my New York was listening to lyrics of my song. You know? so, oh, my goodness. And, and I'll bet you John Lennon would be like, who the heck cares? <laughs> well, actually, I think it was Slick. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Earl Slick that flew back and played it for Yoko. Um, and Yoko liked my changes, thank God. And said if John was alive, that he would have probably made similar changes. So then I get a letter from me and my publishing saying that I wrote the song with John Lennon, but for one dollar sign all the royalties back to the Lennon estate. So now I got a letter saying I wrote a song with John Lennon. So just saying. Huh. Oh, my <laughs> so that gosh. That, and, and, and as the world turns, I'm sure he can thank Yoko for that. And of course, you know, the story continues as well, too. And of course, he got that uh, song, A Sky is Falling, that's, um, you know, written during the pandemic as well, too. And uh, tell us more about the song, what inspired you to write as well, too. And of course, you know, you know, some of the things you did during the pandemic and a lot of musicians actually got a lot accomplished during the uh, pandemic. And of course, you guys as well. Yeah, we got locked down just like everyone else. Um back when COVID started and uh, I didn't honestly, I didn't plan on doing another album in this life. I pretty much didn't think I had much more to say, but <laughs> all of a sudden I had six months. So I get up, I got a recording studio at my ranch and every morning I get up with my coffee, I go downstairs and turn on the machines and see what I come up with. And um, within like two weeks, I had like 15 new songs that, you know, that I really liked. And, uh, that was one of them. This, the album is actually called Season in Hell. It was released uh, last year. Um, it's doing pretty well. And um, obviously some of those songs are going to be in the uh, the documentary um, Falling Higher, uh, which is getting released, I believe, this summer. So um, it's 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 definitely some I think it's my best work so far, but. I probably say that about all my new albums too. So, mm -hmm. like, you know. I, I was just going to talk about season in hell that's come up as well too. And uh, tell us more about the making of it, what inspired and, and everything like that. And, um, you, you know, sounds like a season in hell, but I mean, I think you struck pay dirt on this one too. You know, I wanted to write about the, um, uh, about, I mean, this whole COVID thing, this is historical. I mean, there's going to be people 50 years in our future reading about what's going on today, you know? Um, and I wanted to kind of get more of a, I wanted to write my songs more about what the feeling, I didn't want to use the word pandemic, COVID, any of those words, you won't find any of my songs. I wanted more of the feeling of what was going on during that time. Um, so that's kind of what inspired me for that. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, to me, it's, it's definitely some of my best work. So I, mm -hmm. I yeah. and, and what's the message you wanted to, uh, convey to the, uh, listeners as well too with uh skies falling and uh some of the works as well 
Uh, you know, um, I guess I'm feeling fine and it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I mean, I buried three or four of my close friends from COVID. So, um, Len Fagan over that owned the cuckoo's nest, uh, he died of, of COVID. Um, I mean, a lot of, we lost a lot of people. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if I have a message more about I, my wife thinks that I, I, my songs are more historical. It's like, in other words, you can listen to my 80s songs and you know, that's from the 80s. You can listen to my 90s songs and it's like, it captures, I think we were the first band in the 80s. I wrote a song called Versatiller Blues. That was about, um, I guess they call them ATMs now. Back then they were Versatiller's ATMs had just come out. Oh yes, and, that's um, right. It's like those uh, machines where it's like, you know, you know, this big takes so many buttons and all that. Now it's just like a, a little unit like this. It just requires a chip and just, you know, one button. And uh, how much do you want? I want this amount. Bingo like that. Yeah. So this is back in the 80s is when they first came out. And back then they were called Versateller machines. So, um, you know, obviously I have a song called Versateller Blues. So, um, you know, so, I mean, it, it's more, it's not trying to say anything more than just kind of a snapshot of, of that time. Uh, is is kind of I guess is my songs in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. and, and where can we find uh, Season in Hell, Skies Falling, Falling Higher, and all your works at? Pretty much anywhere. Uh, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. Um, I mean, everywhere. So um, <laughs> I get emails from all over the world. I mean, um, you know, uh, so yeah, I guess everywhere, basically. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll certainly check those out. What's coming up from Mark Mason of Ampage? Uh, we'll find out in just one minute. You listen to the Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by SoundCloud Studios. Visit online at soundcloudstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author, Mia Moses, The Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. We'll be back with singer, songwriter, multi talented Mark Mason of Ampage. After this time, the Mike Wagner show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to The Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with the amazing singer-songwriter of uh, Ampage, Mark Mason, here on The Mike Wagner Show, and um, covered a lot of ground and spending 40 years of Ampage, your amazing career, and more. And what else can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond, Mark? Um, you know, I, it's pretty much open. I, we're finally doing shows again. We had to cancel pretty much all our shows when COVID hit, like everyone else did. Um, and so I haven't been on the stage since 2020, you know, um, I think the last show we did was either with Vince Neil or Bloister Colt, one of them. But, um, after that, it's, you know, we were able to make a record and, and now we've got a show with the tubes coming up on the 18th in LA and, um, Reading Rock uh, on the 25th. So it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome to be on stage again. Um, really looking forward to it. I love performing. And um, I got a great band. I love my band. Um, these guys have been with me seven or eight years now. And uh, I wish I wish I had them 20 years ago. You know, <laughs> I think many of us do as well, too, the way things are going. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Biggest influence in the career? Yes. Oh, man. Um, 
I, I have no idea, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I, you know, I've got so many influences. It's hard to nail one. Obviously, John Lennon, um, you know, um, just so many. I mean, just so many. Um, you know, the uh, again, the songwriting is everything for me. And I try and change moods and, and, uh, and everything else with the songs. I think I heard one reporter say my songs were uh, full of wit and cynicism. I mean, that pretty much sums them up. Actually, hmm. so It, it sounds like it's really that. unique as well, too. I really like that. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Um, just be real. Be yourself. You know, try not to sound. I, I see a lot of people I know that try and sound like, you know, Pink Floyd or by, you know, try and sound like somebody else. And it's like just you know, try and sound like you, you know, that's, that's the biggest uh, thing I could say. Mm -hmm. And certainly a good point as well, too. Once again, we're singer, songwriter, multi-talented Mark Mason of Ampage here on the Mike Wagner show. Mark, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date, keep in touch. Love to have you back. And um, once again, tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you? Where can people purchase, check out your works, and especially sky is falling, falling higher season and hell and more. Uh, well, first off, you can start off on going to our website is ampage.com. Um, and that's got contact info. And um, like I said, I mean, I get emails from kids all around the world. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the movie is supposed to be out this summer. Really, uh, really excited about that. I actually just watched um, watched the final cut today, <laughs> actually this morning. So um, that was interesting. It's weird when it's kind of about you and you kind of relive it all. So um, it's, 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 it's interesting to watch um, the, um, the season of hell album is doing really good. And I guess we're talking about maybe doing another album too. So um, just a lot of things going, but definitely want to get more shows going. Definitely want to get more shows going. Sounds good. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Once again, Mark, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Make sure you keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love to have you back. We wish you all best. You've got a great future ahead. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show. Brought to you by international award-winning author Mia Mosenzia of Missing and powered by Sonic Web Studios. Be sure to join us again on over 40 podcast platforms and, of course, on the MikeWagnerShow.com, HamiltonRadio.net, and Diamonds FM. Don't forget to support our program with a generous donation at the MikeWagnerShow.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>